Hi there. Um, I'm Khaled Keith Perry uh, from the Image of Fish and or Theopoetics.net. And uh, I was just recently at the Wild Goose Festival. And uh, I have some things and reflections. And so since lots of people are writing things and reflecting, um, I thought I would do that too, both to process things myself and also because it seems like um, it's sometimes useful to have group um, reflection. And so I have a little um, piece of scrap paper with some things on it, and I'm going to chat. Um, the first thing I'm going to say is uh, for Shay, the anarchist reverend, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, not only uh, did he utterly rock the I'm coming to the wild goose thing uh, and kind of alerted me to some stuff that was going down there, but in his reflections after the fact has really opened some stuff up for me. What makes the whole thing crazy is that we didn't actually meet while we're at wild goose, um, which is something I'm going to address later. But right off the front, I wanted to say thank you. Uh, you have a... a what appears to be a prophetic ministerial voice and uh, blessings on you for carrying that out. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a little bit. Um, the first thing, which is the most obvious thing, uh, is that I'm standing in my kitchen, which is a very kind of uh, messy place, and that's because uh, sometimes we don't always pick up on the house as much as we'd like because we have a baby. Christina? Oh, yeah. Um, this is Christina Keith Perry, and we're married, and we have a little baby. And the first thing about Wild Goose that's worth addressing is something to do with family. And so... Uh, Wild Goose was awesome. I had a really great time. And though the weather is not something that the organizers can control yet, um, it certainly is a factor in late June in North Carolina. Uh, especially for families. I felt like it was part of a parade of wilted moms and their wilted babies walking around in circles trying to find just a little bit of shade. There was a wonderful support place at the back of the house with baby baths, and that was terrific, but it was also kind of isolated, which is something that happens to moms with young kids. We're a little isolated. So a little more activities that were geared towards young families, something for the zero to four set, maybe some sing-along, maybe some just open space where there was shade and soft things and moms and dads, for Mike Sadlin, can gather to have um, conversations about what it is to be parents and to raise Christians from scratch. Because um, I ran into a lot of folks who were struggling with what it means to be um, raising and not indoctrinating their little ones and um, would have been rich to be able to sit in, and ground and have some conversations. Um, I think that's most of it. The other piece I'll add is that as someone who was uh, invited to and had a great time leading a workshop session, if there was passing time between the workshops, I would have been able to hang out and answer a couple of questions. And as a workshop participant, it would have been great to be able to get from one workshop to the next one um, without feeling like I missed something in between. So, Callan, want to take it away? Yes. Um, I think indicative of uh, something I want to address is the fact that Christina um, referred to it as a workshop, and it wasn't. The reason she called it a workshop is because uh, that's what she's used to thinking about. It was clearly a speaking event, um, and she's not used to being a speaker. Um, now, other folks may think about it as a workshop, and that's perfectly fine, but the way it was set up was to give people information, uh, and that's what the one-hour passing time thing was about, at least by my read. Um, I know that the geodesic dome area was supposed to be kind of Q&A, and it ended up being that for a lot of the things that I heard that happened in there. But one of the things thinking forward to the next Wild Goose that I would want to think about if I were on the planning committee would be how do we enact church ground up at our conference? Mm -hmm. um, what are the mechanisms in place to allow people to know each other and have conversations about things without having to go to a focal point 
first. Yes, I understand that there are uh, charismata and spiritual gifts that many of the leaders there had and were sharing in kind of uh, gracious aplomb to the folks that were there. However, I also think that there's ways that you can target folks who aren't celebrities, whether they're A-level, B-level, or C-level Christian celebrities, and encourage interactive conversation in a workshop model. Um, this goes back to the thing that the anarchist reverend was doing. Uh, in advance, folks that were paying attention on Twitter knew that there was going to be a certain person who was interested in queer uh, conversation uh, regarding uh, queer theology and trans identity. And that was present and available to folks that could make themselves or want to have a conversation around it. I would love to see more folks more engaged with their own uh, participation earlier on so that there would be these uh, organically emergent groups that would find each other and have conversation about stuff. I don't know what it would take to organize or uh, manage, but I would love to see a more workshoppy feel happen where the interactions between participants really are level and it's not just people congregating around someone with a charisma and then them giving things back. I would love to see uh, a, a more kind of hierarchical thing and a less uh, hub and spoke thing. Um, which leads me to uh, another part of the, the planning, which is just a bit much. Uh, my wife and I are Quakers. And so a lot of our time is spent uh, in silent prayer and, and contemplation, which isn't to say everyone needs to be into that. But I did hear a lot of folks wondering where the worship opportunities were and where the times for prayer and contemplation are. Uh, as a religious member of the Religious Society of Friends, that's certainly something that is very near and dear to my heart. And I would hope that uh, kind of as each church gives its blessings to the greater body of the church in this big tent, uh, I would hope that the Religious Society of Friends has some way of saying, hey, look, there are ways of prayer that bind us together that, that aren't about words. I, would, I, I think that that's, that's powerful. Um, the, the, the word that I would give that is my biggest concern before I say my biggest joy um, is gatekeeping. Um, I do not believe that the Holy Spirit uh, wants humans to be the final say in terms of who gets paid attention to. I think that it, it flows and she is a bestower of wisdom and grace upon people um, regardless of whether they're known to other people or not. That is to say, wisdom is spoken through mouths that might not have written books or have blogs or jobs. And I worry just about the gatekeeping level of it. All the musicians are a certain type. Where, where were um, gospel singers? Where were kind of traditional in, indigenous singers or, or, or MCs? and all kinds of other numbers and types of music and art that could have been there that may have actually helped to have the skin color be a little less homogenous. Who made the choices about who to bring and who not to bring? Who even knew what was happening to know whether they wanted to participate or not? I'm not saying that anyone on the playing team did a bad thing. I'm saying it is super hard for us to break down the gatekeeping role that is part of society. Oftentimes when we think we need to be professional, we worry that we need to select a certain type or a certain kind of person or pedigree to make sure that the thing works right. That's another way of gatekeeping. It's another way of us idolatrously saying, I don't trust spirit to allow people to come together and speak through them. That's an exaggeration. I love you folks. All the folks that have put Wild Goose together, amen, thank you for taking the step off. What I would say to you is, I think we can step even further. There are voices that we have not yet heard. There are trans voices and queer voices and women's voices and people of color and probably all kinds of other class issues we haven't even begun to tackle yet. I want to hear them, and I think we need to hear them, even if it's going to be hard to figure out how to get folks to the table. All that being said, I freaking love the Wild Goose Festival. Uh, I was raised in a house that was more or less secular humanist. We weren't allowed to practice religion. And so I came to Christianity uh, as an adult. So I got the liberal progressive thing down pat. And what I'm trying to figure out is how can I become uh, a more focused and disciplined disciple 
of Christ? How can I live my life under a discipline such that the Spirit instructs me I live my life out? So when I go to events like this, I'm sometimes kind of going in the other direction. A lot of folks who are evangelical are heading, like, in the progressive liberal stream, wondering, you know, uh, where they're going to end up. And I'm headed the other way. I want more discipline in my life. I want to know my scriptures better. I want to be working in community with folks who are trying to nail stuff down. Exactly. Right on. Uh, and so being surrounded by all kinds of folks who are willing to meet me on my journey, even if we're kind of crossing in the different energetic directions, is so sweet. To be with young families and parents and, and conversation partners, it's just an absolute blessing. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone putting it on. I hope that in the future uh, I can go again and that some of the things I addressed earlier are addressed and so that that conversation can continue with an even wider circle with even more voices so that I can be even more greatly formed by that which God has to give. Thank you for what you've all given, listeners and performers, organizers, presenters, and participants. Much love, and I hope to see you around.